as we look at how we use and create energy in order to reach net zero emissions, the International Energy Agency has highlighted what they call a dramatic transformation in what we need to do if we're to reach those targets by the middle of the century. And what they emphasise is the integration of new energy sources into existing infrastructure to help us make that transition. And of course, one thing that people have been looking at a lot is plastics. That's because despite the growth in electricity generation with wind and solar, an awful lot of the existing infrastructure and the way people use fuel and create energy is through liquid and gas fuels. Industries like shipping, construction and manufacturing still rely heavily on crude oil and natural gas. Moreover, global energy infrastructure and pipelines, especially in the Global South, were primarily tailored for the transportation of crude products. Decarbonising these liquid fuels offers a cost-effective pathway to net zero for consumers, even if it serves as an interim solution on the way to full reliance on renewables. To address this challenge, exploration into alternative liquid fuels from various sources, including plants, organic matter and waste materials, has gained a lot of attention. Notably, of course, plastics. Initially derived from crude oil, they can be transformed into synthetic oil and gas through a process known as pyrolysis. In pyrolysis, plastic undergoes a transformation at high temperatures, somewhere between 300 degrees centigrade and 900 degrees centigrade, in the absence of oxygen. This process breaks down the plastic into smaller molecules, resulting in the production of pyrolysis oil, or gas, and that end product can serve as a fuel or be utilised in creating new, second-life plastic products. Proponents of the system argue that it's actually a dual solution. One, it helps reduce the amount of plastic waste we're dumping out there, and two, it reduces our use of virgin fossil fuels. And it is actually really quite easy to do. These things are apparently the curse of our modern age, along with plastic forks and spoons and cups and straws. The bulk of these disposable carrier bags are made from a plastic called HDPE. HDPE is one of the most produced plastics. It's all over the place. It's in milk bottles, it's in carrier bags, it's in food packaging. It's just everywhere. The great thing about this is in destructive distillation, this will break down to leave absolutely nothing and the whole plastic is then turned into a fuel and we can pass it through this and collect it and that's exactly what we're going to do. We stuff this can with a plastic bag. Now this seriously isn't anything more than a paint can with some plumbing fittings. I did the build in 1707, I did this modification in 1710, this is just a bit of microbore copper called around a sewage pipe. There's our bags in our tin can. Close them up, apply some heat and give it a bit of time. So you can do this with all kinds of things. Actually, you can do it with tyres as well. But HDP is particularly good because it leaves no residue. Styrene's work well. Any kind of plastic this will happen with. Because the plastic has no water in it to be driven off and no volatiles. So it cooks down to a goo and then it begins to break up and then it begins to distill. And so at the end of the process, this is what you get. It's still quite warm and when it cools down, it'll go thicker and waxier. And a lot of people have actually done this on the internet, but I wanted to do it in context with pyrolysis and dry and destructive distillation. And if we burn that, we should get it to light. It's a bit stubborn. Well, there we go. We've got it to light with a very sooty, smoky flame because it's still quite heavy and more akin to diesel than it is to methanol or ethanol. It is, of course, not without its critics, but then what isn't without its critics? So critics point out the high temperature needed to do this actually just burns more energy than you're producing. 
And that, of course, is a serious disadvantage because more energy used means it costs a lot. And that's what stands in the way of recycling things like yoghurt pots and teaspoons. It's just cheaper to make them. That is, until this paper came out. The paper outlines an innovative method that is much less energy intense and much cheaper to implement than conventional recycling. To the extent that it reaches a critical point where it becomes much more sensible to collect and reuse the plastic than it is to treat it as a disposable. At the moment, less than 10% of the billions of tonnes of plastic waste generated have been recycled. The study suggests that improving methods combined with bans on single-use plastics could significantly reduce the use of plastic items for which alternatives are not readily available. Polyethylene and polypropylene, the two widely used plastics known for their strength and resistance to high temperatures, which are particularly challenging in recycling at the moment. But this process reduces the temperature to producing useful fuels to well below 100 degrees centigrade and is claimed not to generate any unwanted byproducts. The groundbreaking process involves a new type of catalyst. The catalyst is called butyl pyridinium chloride and it's a catalyst already used in the petroleum industry. The genius is that they mix it with aluminium chloride to create an ionic solution that operates in acidic conditions. And the reaction yields a gasoline-like compound called alkanes and they can be used as fuel or as a raw material for new plastics. The entire reaction occurs in a single vessel, takes only three hours and works at 70 degrees centigrade and of course that's in start contrast to existing recycling techniques that require two stages, much longer durations and temperatures exceeding 200 degrees centigrade and more often 400 degrees centigrade. Apparently the method is particularly applicable to low density polyethylene and polypropylene, both of which are not commonly collected and processed in curbside recycling, but those plastics constitute approximately half of 360 million tonnes of plastics produced globally each year. So to my mind, being able to do that at 70 degrees centigrade, which is not much warmer than a cup of tea, and being able to do it in such a short time, represents a huge step forward for pyrolysis and plastic waste recovery into liquid fuels. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.